More roster cuts plus. Is Bill Guerin looking to potentially make a move once players are waived from elsewhere in the NHL? And what to watch for tonight against the Blues? All today on Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Lockdown Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we discuss the most recent round of roster cuts that give us a little glimpse as to what the opening night roster will look like. We'll preview tonight's final uh, test on the road for the Wilds uh, in the preseason against the St. Louis Blues. And We'll look at the potential for Bill Guerin to maybe add a piece to this roster once cutdowns start to happen throughout the NHL as well. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and guiding you through the preseason here on Locked on Wild. So we had as expected, another big cut down from the Minnesota Wild. Their roster now in training camp is down to 34 players. Uh, the Wilds assigning Damon Hunt, Simon Johansson, Sammy Walker, and Jesper Wallstedt to the Iowa Wild, and uh, also placing Joseph Cramarosa and Joe Hicketts on waivers for the purpose of sending them to the Iowa Wild as well. And as Michael Russo notes on Twitter, both Cramarosa and Hicketts cleared waivers, so they will report to the Iowa Wild. Uh, goalie Zane McIntyre has also been placed on waivers, uh, so if he clears, he will head down to the Iowa Wild roster as well. So the roster picture starting to really take shape here for this Minnesota Wild team, and uh, you know a, a fun training camp for sure for Wallstead who had uh, you know, got, got a chance to play with the likes of Marc-Andre Fleury and Philip Gustafson and really showed that he's got some uh, impressive skills to his game that will one day translate at the NHL level. Now, it's not going to be this year because the other thing that I think this shows us is that the guys who are still around, still on the roster, the training camp roster, are likely going to be some of the names that you will see in the event of injury or in the event that uh, there are roster moves made by this team um, over the course of the uh, early part of the season. And so uh, just looking at some of the uh, just looking at some of the other things that go with this, um, Russo also noting that Carson Lambos is still with the team and played so well in Milwaukee. We keyed in on that uh, a little bit in yesterday's episode. Played so well with Milwaukee that, uh, or in Milwaukee, that the Wild are going to give him tonight's game before sending him back to the uh, WHL, just as kind of a tip of the cap and a reward for a job well done. Um, it, I, I thought it was super fun to watch him go toe-to-toe with the likes of Patrick Kane and Really look forward to seeing how his game develops here this season and when he starts to you know, further knock on the door towards being a member of this Minnesota Wild squad. So uh, a reward for Lambos for sure. Russo also uh, noting from Dean Evason, Evason expects in the seventh and final preseason game Saturday that the Wild will roll out their opening night lineup. Tomorrow is now a day off, so uh, there will probably be in Russo's estimates, a major cutdown day. But the special team's practices are expected to be their team, which includes Rossi, Patan, Schuster, and Addison. That is interesting that those four were singled out, not necessarily Rossi and Addison, who uh, it's no secret, I think, are locks to make the roster 
uh, for this wild team. But you look at the likes of Schuster and Patan being singled out in that um, leads you to believe that those guys will be um, some of the ones that will fill those roster spots of uh, John Merrill and Jordan Greenway to start the season. And we've talked about Schuster and uh, his size that he brings to the table. That's obviously super intriguing for a team that has a decor that is mostly that same size profile. It's nice to have a little bit of variety to that. And Patan, I, th I thought, played well with Greenway and Eric Sinek the other night and could very likely be a guy that um, that ends up being the one that takes that spot and ends up slotting in maybe on that line, depending on how things go in the early part of the season. But interesting that those two were singled out as this roster looks further and further like it is, uh, it is getting to be a complete roster. Now, obviously, for tonight's game, as we'll talk about in a little bit, you've got a lot of young players who are going to get an opportunity to see what they have it's mostly a prospect lineup in this one tonight with the exception of a couple of players. And we'll, we'll key in on that with what to watch for here this evening. But, you know, it's, it's getting close to the finished final product of what we'll see on opening night against the New York Rangers. So um, more cuts anticipated tomorrow, um, as Russo noted. So uh, we should see... What will be close to the uh, the final roster here uh, by midweek to the end of the week. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, we will, of course, keep an eye on that uh, here throughout the week as well. Uh, when we continue today's episode, we will look at the potential of the Wilds to add a piece. Once rosters start being cut down, many teams that have yet to get themselves under the salary cap. So we'll discuss that when we come back here on Locked on Wild. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is a new flavor. Are you ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor. That would be cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light and chewy texture plus real chocolate cookie dough chunks. And of course, they are also covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, they're healthy for you too. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. So run to built.com. Make sure to use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, head to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And for Lockdown Wild listeners, along with all of our other Minnesota podcasts, you can now find Lockdown Wild on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Lockdown Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7, and it is free of charge. Download the Locked on Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Interesting note in the 32 Thoughts podcast, Elliot Friedman mentioning that some teams are still looking to make some moves, and he wondered out loud if the Minnesota Wild are going to look to add a scorer. So let's look at the uh, situation right now as it stands for the Minnesota Wild. They currently have about $5.7 million in cap space here for this season. And the reality of the situation is there are a handful of teams that are going to have to make some decisions as training camp finishes to trim the roster down to get it under the salary cap. And that is going to mean some Names that we recognize will be cut, will be waived, will be out on the free agent market. So does Bill Guerin add somebody of that profile to this roster? 
I look at it like this. You've got the Capri's offline set. Set it, forget it, done deal. And the center position for this team, Ryan Hartman, Jewel Erickson Eck, Marco Rossi, and some combination of, and I, I, I've seen the comments on Sam Steele. And so let's let's just put him with this mix, not necessarily saying, although it sounds like he's going to be um, he's going to be getting a role on this team. The center position, Hartman, Erickson, Eck, Rossi, Steele, slash Jost, slash Goudreau. If you're going to add somebody there, if you're going to add a center, it better be not to the detriment of Marco Rossi. If it's going to be somebody that's going to come in and is going to take minutes from him, absolutely not. Not something that should even come into the mind of Bill Guerin. I don't get the sense that it will. I think this team is really committed to giving him a sizable role this year because he has earned it. And I don't think they're going to do anything to jeopardize that. Now, with the likes of Tyson Jost, with the likes of Freddie Goudreau, if you want to add anywhere on offense, it's got to be at a wing position. And especially early on in the season with Jordan Greenway coming back from injury, if you want to add somebody that is a little more proven, maybe an offensive commodity, I think that would be the route that you would elect to go. On defense, your top four is set. You've got Kalen Addison playing in one of those spots on that third line. You've got Alex Goligoski as the other. Defense is pretty crowded. So I don't think there is, I don't think there's a logical fit to add somebody there, especially with John Merrill coming back into the equation relatively early on. I, I don't think it makes sense to add there. If they're going to add somewhere on offense, it's probably going to be at a wing position. And I I mean, on one side, depending on where people play, Kaprizov, Boldy, Felino, and likely Dewar, that seems pretty set. So I, I don't know. Maybe it is a situation where they, if they can get kind of the right fit, they elect to uh, to go try to get somebody. But I think Dean Evison and Bill Guerin like the mix that they have right now and don't really want to do anything to tip the apple cart at this point. Now, if Freddie Goudreau doesn't perform offensively like he did last year, if Sam Steele doesn't pan out, then there are going to be some spots where you're like, okay, we can, we can add something here. We can, uh, we can go get somebody to try to help us out. So if it were me, I think the more likely of the scenarios is that the Wilds kind of stand pat through the cuts and uh, through that phase. They stand pat there. I think if the Wild are going to add anybody this year, it's going to be at the trade deadline. If they're in a position to secure a playoff spot um, at that point, that's, I think, where the addition is going to happen. It's just, you didn't go through all this work to get Marco Rossi a spot on this roster to then all of a sudden replace him with some free agent that gets cut by somebody because their team's over the cap. You haven't said all these good things about Connor Dewar and Brandon Duhame to all of a sudden do like they did last year where they go get a Nick Delorier to take one of those spots. This is the prime time to give those guys an opportunity to see what they have. And in some cases, especially doers, Rossies, those guys deserve the minutes. This is the year to give it to them, not to bring in a veteran who's going to come play in particular spots and is just going to take that spot and not really do as much with it, not give that development, that growth. So if it's me, I, I don't know, unless some just absolute shock of a cut, which it's 
it's likely there will be somebody that just completely gets cut by surprise. There are a lot of teams out there that operate in ways that don't really make sense. So it's entirely possible that somebody gets cut that we didn't expect. And maybe in that situation, you take a look. But if they're just going to get somebody just for the sake of getting somebody, I would say no in that instance. Just don't do that. Just let these guys get the full season to develop and to continue to build towards them being part of this new core uh, that will be established here over the next three years. So let's. Let's not mortgage that. Let's just let those guys have that opportunity that they earned and uh, let them run with it. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that here as well as would imagine that by the end of the, the next couple of days, there will be a, a flurry, forgive the pun, of uh, moves in that department. So if the Wild do anything, we, of course, will keep you up to date on it. But um, we'll just have to wait and see. We're going to finish today's episode by taking a look at tonight's matchup against the St. Louis Blues. Who's in? Who is fighting for a spot? And what are we watching in tonight's game? That's all coming up here on Locked on Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And want to mention it again, Locked on Wild listeners. You can find our show in addition to the other Minnesota podcasts all on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Lockdown Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7, absolutely free of charge. Make sure to download the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. So here is the roster we're looking at for tonight's matchup and some interesting things that, uh, that I look at in this one. Your centers for tonight's matchup are listed as, and I don't know that we read a whole lot into this, but it's just interesting considering that uh, Jost has played as a wing for pretty much the entirety of training camp so far. He's listed as a center in this one tonight. Tyson Jost, Nick Patan, Marco Rossi, and Steven Fogarty are the listed centers for this game tonight. So we'll see what the lineups look like, but I find it interesting. And I uh, Russo did mention as well that um, we're going to get a look at Sam Steele at the wing, even though he is expected to start the season centering Freddie Goudreau and Matt Boldy. Um, again, just for roster versatility, a guy who plays center and um, ends up, being able to uh, to play some wing too in a pinch. Uh, I like the fact that we're trying players at different positions because you could have something happen during a game that you're not anticipating and you have to try to piece the lineup together um, from that. So I, I applaud giving it a go here in the, uh, the preseason just to kind of see where things uh, are at. Uh, looking at some other things that uh, are going to be worthwhile in watching tonight. You've got the likes of just a slew of young players that are getting an opportunity to get a look here in this game tonight, such as we mentioned, Stephen Fogarty, Ryan O'Rourke, Adam Beckman, Dakota Mermis, Mason Shaw, uh, Mitchell Chafee, Nick Sweeney. We're getting another look at Brandon Baddock tonight as well. These are guys that, you know, if not for the Minnesota Wild here tonight, getting a look to potentially get an opportunity elsewhere. And you never know who's watching during these games. It could be somebody, it could be a scout from some other team that sees Baddock do something or sees somebody do something uh, in this one tonight and is really intrigued by it. Just something that down the road could lead to a trade or an opportunity of some other kind, but those guys are all going to get a big opportunity here in this one to uh, just see what they've got against mostly a uh, pretty complete starting lineup for the St. Louis Blues here tonight. Now, what are the Wilds going to do in net? It sounds as though this is going to be a full go for Philip Gustafson 
uh, against St. Louis tonight. As Michael Russo notes, Dean Evison says he's had a fantastic camp, but tonight will be his and the Wild's biggest test. Not a lot of vets in the lineup. The only veteran players in the lineup tonight, Jake Middleton, Tyson Jost, Brandon Duham, uh, Connor Dewar. So Jake Middleton is the vet on this roster that is uh, going to be, I would imagine, starting tonight. Um, beyond that, it's a bunch of young players. So it, it should be interesting to uh, to see all of these players get a chance here tonight. But I guess the ones that I am really keying in on tonight want to see what Nick Patan does in a you know big opportunity. And it looks as though Rossi, Dewar, and Duhame are going to get paired up again here in this one tonight. We've talked about it a lot during the preseason. Would ultimately like Rossi to get more elevated minutes to start the the season, but it, I'm I'm not surprised given how they played the other night that Dean Evison wants to go with that Dewar Rossi Duhame line. It just seems like a line that's full of of hard work, hustle, and uh, they play well together so we're getting that tonight again and so that is probably going to be one of the lines that we get to start the season but those lines are only going to be together as long as they play well if that boldy line with Goudreau and Sam Steele struggles Marco Rossi is uh, going to be the one in line to get minutes with Matt Boldy it's not like we are going to try you know, some other veteran to uh, to slot in there. Um, Boldy and Rossi ultimately are the pairing that we should see um, at some point here down the line. So it'll be um, it'll be interesting to see how everybody plays here in this one again against mostly a veteran lineup for the St. Louis Blues. So a lot of prospects on the line, and you know, I would like to see. Adam Beckman do something. We keyed in on this the other night. Beckman had um, an opportunity to play on um, on one of the starting lines. Didn't really do anything with it. Didn't do anything, I guess, to you know directly impact the game in a negative way. But you want to see some of those highlights from these guys uh, to show that they've got that promise at the NHL level. And Beckman has last year in training camp. He rocked. He absolutely nearly made the team because of how well he played in training camp. So want to see him end on a high note here in this one this evening, just to, uh, to get, you know, if he doesn't make the team, get the Iowa season going well and uh, potentially being one of those guys that gets a call up. If somebody gets hurt uh, down the line, that's, that's the other big piece of this too, is who are the guys that show enough to be ready to get a call up? If somebody goes on the IR, somebody misses a few games, somebody misses a good chunk of the season, who's going to be the one to step up? And it's games like tonight that uh, that decide who are those names that we see as things push on. So that's the primer for this evening. Uh, of course, we've got plenty coming up here the rest of the week as we monitor what the opening night roster looks like as we get closer and closer to seeing it. We'll keep an eye on cuts throughout the NHL to see if the Wild maybe are a fit for any of those potential players that uh, get released here so that their teams can get under the cap. So a lot to keep an eye on and make sure that you do so by following Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts, subscribing on YouTube, hitting the notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future episodes as we keep you up to date with all things Minnesota Wild every single day of the week. We're bringing you new episodes, in today's case, twice a day, at least once a day, Monday through Friday, as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.